Power Automate is just being released as a visual inside of Power BI. What I was thinking was how awesome would it be if we could somehow take the data you're looking at and then store it somewhere else? Using the Power Automate visual, we can do exactly that. And in this YSL short, we're going to show you how. Here I have my report. And what I would like my user to be able to do is have a look at some data and then choose to capture it. Now, of course, they do have the option to go to a visual and choose export data from there, but uh, I want to automate anything I can. To do this, you're going to need the Power Automate Visual. If you're using the most up-to-date version of Power BI, it will automatically be listed in your visualization pane. If you're using an older version, you'll need to go to the Visual Marketplace and get more visuals to pull it in. So making sure you've not got any visuals selected, give your Power Automate a little click. And then I'm going to position this over the top. At first glance, this looks like it's going to take up a lot of room, but it's actually going to be a button when we're all said and done with this. So I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. The data that I want to pass in, I'm actually previewing in this bottom table. So I want to pass in the product, the price, the quantity, and the sale date. So from the product table, I'm going to take the product name. From the purchase table, I'm going to take the price, purchase date, and quantity. So they're now all tethered to this button. Now, of course, I need somewhere to actually write this data to. So what I've decided to do is use an Excel table, and it does need to be a table in Excel. And I'm going to write my data into that. This technique works exactly the same way for SQL and for SharePoint lists. The reason I'm using Excel is, of course, everyone following along with this will probably have access to Excel. I'm going to put this in OneDrive, but the technique will work exactly the same way if you decide to use Dropbox instead. So I'm going to put this into my OneDrive, into my folder called Power BI. With that done, it's time to create my flow. Go to your Power Automate Visual, click on the ellipses in the top right hand corner, and choose Edit. From here, if you've got an already existing flow, you can choose to use that. I don't want to use one of my existing flows, so I'm going to go to New. There are some templates, such as updating Excel rows, that you could use to get yourself started. I'm going to make mine from scratch. Instant Cloud Flow. To rename it, try and remember to rename it before you create it. The renaming doesn't always work as you'd expect, so I'm going to change the name of it before I create it. I'm going to call this one Capture Rows. This flow is going to be triggered by a Power BI button getting clicked. So I'm going to choose Add New Step. And the thing I want to use is, well, that's convenient, Excel Online Business. I don't want to delete rows, return rows, don't want to list rows. I would like to add rows into a table. From here, I need to make sure I'm logged into the correct place. Right now, I'm logged in as my Trainer10 account. So I'm going to click on the ellipses. And if I wasn't already logged in, I could choose Add New Connection and then Log In. Power Automate is included with most e-licenses, so you've probably already got the basic license good to go. I'm going to go to Location. And I'm going to choose OneDrive for Business. You'll see there are all my share points that I could also write to. I'm going to choose my document library. That's just OneDrive. And the file that I want to save into, Power BI. And then it was my file that I created, sales table. The specific table in here that I want to choose is going to be sales. Here it's asking me for if the data is coming from Power BI. So if you wanted to, you could, using something like a slicer and a table with a list of file locations, actually choose which file you wanted to save into. So I could swap between several different team members. Now I have the columns that I want to fill in. So I'm going to click into product. 
and then I can go down and I can choose which Power BI bit of information I want to pass in. So I don't want the purchase date into this particular call. I would like the product name. Give that a click and the data is going to get there is from Power BI. Click back on add another row to add the rest of the data. And then in here, purchase date. So I'm going to choose my purchase date column. For price, I'm going to choose the price column. And for quantity, I'm going to choose the quantity column. With all that done, I'm going to click on save. And then I'm also going to make sure I click on save and apply. Apply means that this flow is going to be attached to that button. Click on the little back arrow. And you see information about your flow. I've not run it yet, so that might be the next thing I want to do. Back to report. You'll see your button has now appeared. If you wanted to format your button, you could click on the little format roller. I'm going to go down to button text. And I'm going to change my font color to match the rest of my scheme. To change the background, I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to go to fill. And I'm going to change my fill again to match the scheme. Your front end user will simply click on this button. But because we're in editing mode, we have to hold control as we do with any other button. Hold control, click on that, and my flow is now running in the background. To check that that's all run, I could click on the ellipses, go down to edit. I can see all my flows. If I wanted to apply a different flow, I could simply go to the visual that I wanted to do that for and choose apply. I'm going to go to the ellipses on the right hand side, more commands, and I'm going to go down to details. This will show me that my flow is currently running. If I wanted to, I could add another step and I could say, you know what, once it's finished running, I want it to automatically email someone. Now what I'm going to do is just check on the data. If I want to check my data, I can swap to my OneDrive. And in here, I can see that my file has been edited a few seconds ago. If I click on my sales table, I can see all of my rows that have been added. One thing to bear in mind with this is Power BI does have limits on how many rows of data a visual can actually handle. That's set by whoever created the visual, in this case, Microsoft. So there are sometimes other techniques that you might need to imply rather than passing the data from Power BI, strictly speaking. You could instead pass through the filters that have been applied to, say, your SQL database or your SharePoint list and filter the data there and there and store it. But this is a nice, simple way that you can include backing up or storing that data from your report. I hope you found this useful. And I'll see you in the next video.